Okay, so let me give you a brief overview of um, getting the blocking started with Maya. I do recommend that you go through the, um, the different links that I posted in the classroom, which have projects that are similar to what you guys are doing in the class for, for this project. But it takes you over several different tools and, and different techniques you can learn from, uh, especially if you have never seen Maya before. Uh, I gotta say that the first time I learned Maya, I thought you you needed five brains to to understand how to run this software because it has a lot of complex menus and things that you just are hard to understand at the beginning. But uh, be confident that the more you use it, the more you're gonna get used to the interface. Okay. The first thing that you're gonna have is the viewport, right? Uh, if you press spacebar. Space bar. There you go. Um, you're going to notice that you have different viewports here, and you have the top, front, side, and perspective. Uh, think of viewports as camera, right? You have a scene, you know, in film. This is uh, similar to the the environment in a film. In a movie, you're creating a scene that is 3D. So imagine a um, camera on the top and the ceiling facing down that will be the top view on the front will be a camera right in the front of the scene and one on the side and then you have your perspective viewport that pretty much has depth while the other ones are have have width and height uh, that you're gonna see that are kind of flat uh, this one has perspective too you know has depth so you have width and height and also you see depth okay so, uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is the menus. Uh, every time you change one of these menus, some options here on the main menu change. And uh, that to me, the first time I saw that, it's like, wow, that's pretty extensive. And it's not that 3D Max is less, but it's, they have, the 3D Max does kind of the same, but it's kind of navigating through the options that you have on the tools. So it kind of uh, uh, arranges it a little bit different than Maya, okay? And Maya has, you know, the submenu, and then you have the main menu there that changes. So let's go to the modeling menu. That's the one that, that uh, you want to be on when you're modeling. Um, the first thing I would do is suggest to start with polygons while you understand how everything works. And then go over here and create a plane. Okay, and it's already telling you drag on the grid over here. So this is the standard grid. Um, you remember from your uh, algebra classes, the, the coordinates, right? So you have X and Y, and in this case, you also have Z on the, on the axis. I'm going to um, press spacebar. So I'm sorry about that. Spacebar on the perspective view so that you see. Um, oh, oh, no, let's leave it like that. And let's go back to creating a, uh, our plane and I'm just gonna click and drag all the way and then release the mouse okay I'm using the left mouse button okay and then as you can see the side because it's completely sideways it looks flat because a plane does not have depth a cube does have depth but not the plane so that's our floor uh, you have then created your your uh, first geometry that's your ground Let's go over here in the attribute editor, and uh, you're gonna notice that you have, uh, you know, different different menus here. You have the options here. Actually, we can do it here, uh, in the channel box. So let's go on, and that default name polygon plane one. Just call it floor, okay? And press enter. Make make sure that you know how to you know rename the geometry. So that then later, when you have 20, 30, 50, 100 items on the scene, you know what they correspond to, okay? So you have your floor, and let's say that you are going to work on an interior of a scene. Um, I would say that to put walls and then to start populating it like we did in, um, in 3D Max also, okay? So I'm gonna hold the alternate key down and drag, uh, hold down the left button while moving the mouse that allows you to kind of move the scene around okay so you can do that uh, 
what I'm going to do is create another, let me, middle mouse, doing the same, you know, uh, holding the, the, the uh, alternate key down and the middle mouse button allows you to move a little bit higher on the scene or the left mouse allows you to change the, what you're doing is changing the position of the camera, okay? So I'm going to create another plane. So I'm gonna go polygon plane and I'm gonna drag and this is gonna be my wall, okay? And uh, the only problem is that the wall is on the floor. So let's rotate it and the rotation, the tools are here on the left you're going to be using the move tool a lot, which is this one here. You know, you can move things up and down, sideways, or in any of the axes. Notice that when I move the mouse over one of the axes, it highlights, highlights it in yellow. So that means that it's selected, right? So you move only on that axis. But if you select it in the middle, then you're going to be moving it in all axes at the, at the same time, you know, up and sideways. So what I want to do is rotate that. So let's go to the rotation tool, this one here that looks like um, like a little circle. And the, the tools change to these circles here and each one represents a handle, okay? So you got the, uh, you see the axis over here on the left of the viewport, you know, the Y, X, Y, and Z. You get those colors here or you also get on the yellow one outside, you move it on all axes at the same time. In this case, I'm just gonna rotate this way, okay? That way, it looks more like I am putting the wall up, so to say. And I'm using as reference, as visual reference, the this viewport over here, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna put it on the other side since we're on this side right now. And move it back. And I know, a, I know it's a little bit diagonal. I'm using, I'm gonna middle mouse here and zoom out. Middle mouse on, use the wheel to zoom out here too. Uh, what I wanna do is rotate it so that it looks like, uh, like it's uh, against this, you know, on this side of the, of the grid. Notice that when I move this, the rotate X gets highlighted. So let's see what happens if we put it on 90. That's what I'm going for. Yes, excellent. So I wanted just I wanted it to be just a straight, uh, straight, uh, following the grid and the and the uh, the other side. Notice that now it looks very nice straight over here. Okay, so you can either do it manually or enter the values over here. Okay, so back on that one, let's move it back to, so that it's against the wall over there. There you go. And if you notice, it's a little bit right below the the uh, the floor so let's move it up okay excellent and i like to kind of go around you see there's a little gap and it's probably you know we see it over here so let's move it up a little bit and as you see all the other all the other viewports also update as i move that one you can in the same manner use the scale tool this one here that looks like a square and then the handles are like little boxes at the end of that little line. So if you do it in the middle, if you gra grab the that in the middle, you will scale everything up. Or if you grab one of the axes, you will scale in one direction. Isn't that nice? That way, if you let's say wanted to make the you know this shorter, you could scale it down, and then you kind of move it down so that so that there's not a gap here, okay? So let's make sure the gap is there. If it intersects a little bit like that, doesn't matter. That's that's perfectly fine. Excellent, so let's now uh, use a different technique. Let's, uh, instead of creating another wall, oh, by the way, just make sure that you uh, also wall right, okay? Uh, that you also rename your, your geometry, okay? Uh, let's go edit. Um, duplicate. Oh. If you get this message, it's okay. It's just uh, because we're using the educational version. So edit duplicate right here. And you say, but nothing happened. Well, let's see if that's true. There's your, there's your, um, your wall. Okay. So what we want to do is to 
rotate that wall now okay so you can rotate it and did I just do it in every direction control Z is the magical the magical um, command to just rotate and notice what happens there let's put this on 180 and I always look there to see which axis is that I need and then 180 enter and then that makes it perfectly straight that it's not tilted and then I go back to the move tool to move it back so that it's in, in this side of the uh, of the floor and then I'm using this one here looking at this one as I move over here in the perspective viewport to make sure that I keep it somewhere there by the by the edge and look over here make sure it's intersecting okay excellent so I'm using the alternate and left mouse button to do that okay so we have our initial setup let's hit the space bar to zoom, zoom into that viewport and uh, notice that we have now a scene I'm gonna look I'm gonna zoom in a little bit until the edges of of the environment disappeared the, the idea is to give the illusion of an environment rather than this a floating environment okay in animation uh, for gaming and film you pretend that there's a room with four walls but in reality you could have only two walls and never disclose that there's two walls on the other side missing the ceiling could be missing also if you use a, a view like this uh, if you do move the camera lower then people might start noticing oh there's a gap there there's no ceiling and that is done also in you know even on TV sometimes you see the uh, the actors in what looks to be a house but in reality it's just a set of walls put together really high and the camera never goes beyond beyond uh, that edge of that back wall so you never see that there's no ceiling on the set okay so you're kind of doing the same by recreating a virtual set. So now from that point on, we just have to start um, including items, right? So let's go to on the polygon menu set there. Let's click a box and let's say, let's make maybe a dresser and drag it up. That's our dresser. You know, we, we might need to move it back. So to put it there. Um, if you wanted to put uh, drawers on it, you could very well, again, use the duplicate and then move it forward. And at this stage, you might need to probably scale it down because we only need to pretend that we have a drawer over there, right? We don't need to uh, exactly say, okay, we have so I'm going to scale it okay, with the scale tool, scale it in this direction and put it down and I have it right there. Okay, So I have uh, that over there. I could maybe duplicate it a few more times and there's other options to duplicate you know, by re replicating this over there too, like X amount of times. So I'm going to select the three of them by holding shift down and move it down. Try to make sure the spacing is okay. So there you go. You have uh, something that resembles a dresser right, right there. Um, it does not have to, we do not have to know that, that's, that there's no drawers unless you're gonna open it and the character is gonna interact with it you don't need to really model the the opening on the dresser um, you know in the same manner you could put maybe something like this a little a little sphere to 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 simulate you know the the handle so maybe like that and this this is where you can uh, it's kind of far away Okay, so you could, you know, maybe make a handle over there um, until it touches the um, the. Uh, oh my goodness, I can't think. The the drawer. Okay, um, let's see. Let me 
take a quick look. Polysphere. There's a lot of different attributes here um, that you can kind of look. Um, well. You have also the option of creating a uh, torus, okay? And uh, my mouse is starting to fail. <laughs> uh, give me just one moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, you can uh, uh, it uh, lower the uh, the amount of UVs that you have, uh, may maybe the sections, you know, with, you can incre increase or decrease the radius. Let's go back to that other section here. Poly torus here on the attribute editor. And uh, you can decrease the subdivisions there, you know, maybe do something like that. That might look elegant. And you can also change, uh, let me zoom in so that you can see it better. Uh, more or less subdivisions there uh, to keep it lower and higher polygon okay I'm gonna move it up and uh, what you could do is because you don't really need that other side of on the back you know if we if we did something like this for example uh, a section of it will be inside the uh, the geometry so you could just put it like that you could very well delete segments and uh, it's not that hard uh, that that hard to do let's see if we can see these uh, from the bottom from the top we come over here on the top view okay and let me see I'm going to let me see let me add one more yeah the subdivisions to eight so that i have one line over here and one line over here so what i'm going to do is now, now that i'm ready to cut that i'm going to right click on it and you get another whole set of menus the ones that i'm going to go for is face when you do that you're allowed to click on any individual face uh, of the uh, of the geometry and the faces are pretty much the rectangles that you see okay that's what we consider faces. So I'm going to select those by dragging a selection and delete. And now we only have, let's go right click again and go to object mode again to go back to it. And now it's missing that part, but it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is place it over here on that drawer. Let me hit the space bar. Get over here and we get an effect of something like that. Okay, so you have different choices there for for that. Let's say I wanted to make a um, a sofa or a cushion or something on that line. You know, I could very well also let's say cancel over there. You know, do something like this. You know, and then uh, I have my. That will be um, maybe an ottoman or something on that line. Uh, yeah, let's let's make it really. We could make it like more like this, and uh, maybe duplicate it and and rotate it. You know, I can just rotate it here. There you go. Back to the channel box. Let's make sure that this is at 80 degrees. So 90 degrees. It's going to negative. So let's go negative 90. Okay. And that's a simple blocking of a sofa. Um, to learn more about, uh, you know, extruding tools, if you would like to go in that way, um, I would suggest that you check those tutorials that I that I posted that um, that will be very helpful get you step by step on more polygon tools that, that are going to help you understand the process a little bit more in depth so there you have you know maybe you can put now um, duplicate and you know make the cushions that way so you could maybe make them thinner and 
them back and you know, just kind of arrange them there and then kind of fill it up you know with more and more cushions okay and uh, there you go you also could make a uh, picture frame you know that way uh, you could get maybe a cylinder to make a trash can for example okay you can always increase or decrease this going to the attribute editor and on the polygon cylinder node which is the one that gives you all the uh, all the attributes um, actually not that one this one the poly cylinder one not p cylinder poly cylinder so you go and you know maybe do more or less uh, you get different shapes there you know you get it like a box over there so it's up to you you know you want to do that um, you can do that you can also duplicate it and edit duplicate and maybe make a picture frame you know by scaling it down and maybe oval shape picture frame or a mirror and then let's move it right let's put it on the on the wall and rotate it and once again I want to look on the channel box here and as I rotate and this is the way I work um, let's make it 90 degrees there you go now it's 90 degrees it's against the wall so it's uh, not gonna be tilted and then you kind of move it there and place it wherever you need to okay so what else could you do you may you could make uh, uh, a torus right to make it um, you know like a picture frame as well uh, you have a pyramid too you know you just explore the different um, geometries that you have there available to you and uh, you can get ideas on modifying them to make uh, your primitives uh, let's say the trash can let's say you, this a trash can is one of those electronic ones you know you could I mean ones that, that not electronic <laughs> um, automatic ones that you step on it you know you maybe you can make the uh, you know the outer ring like this this could be the base of it right and then you kind of want to look around and, uh, and use the other viewports also which helps to to place everything you know correctly and maybe it has a, a cylindrical shape so you can duplicate that so edit duplicate go all the way up and with the scale tool I'm gonna squash it down right in one axis and then in the middle I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna move it down with the move tool okay and that could be somehow the um, the lid okay you could also do um, you know maybe the sphere and then cut the half like I did and then put the pedal here with uh, with the box you know you can make a little box here and that could be kind of like The, the you know the part that you step on I'm holding alternate it's just just an idea you know something to explore you could also make it like a stool you know that right now if you remove that other bottom part you can also make it like a little stool as well so that's, those are some ideas you can consider okay so then once you finish doing your blocking you know this and this is just an introduction to it please please take a look at the um, at the lessons that I posted that are more extensive and go more in depth with the tools and then you know once you learn and explore uh, you can post any questions in the classroom I can give you some extra tips that you might find helpful um, we need to then render okay and notice that I'm zooming in enough so that I don't see the edges on the scene okay I don't want to see the edges of the scene 
uh, or the or the roof okay and then you're gonna see this is what you're gonna you know from here you go file save save scene as and then uh, follow the you know the path and then that way you know where where you saved it and that's what you're gonna upload upload please upload um, your files to Dropbox instead of to the assignment discussion area just to protect your privacy okay that way uh, other students can see your work from the render but the, the work remains you know just for your eyes only and um, that's gonna be saved to Dropbox right that way I can open the file and show you anything that might need to be improved or open it and see how you did um, certain procedures and also then you come here on the uh, on the rendering you know you have three options here IPR you have the one with the eye and the plain one so you just go on the plain one and that's the render view notice how everything is looking it's, it looks a little bit different than what we see here so uh, just play a little bit you know maybe if you need to move back and re-render okay that might be something you want to do but be careful with showing the edges we want to keep that illusion of uh, of the camera being on a bigger setting okay um, so this one you're gonna also save to the classroom okay so that your classmates can see what you're making in the classroom so you go file save image and save is uh, as a JPEG which is somewhere here doo -doo 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 -doo. JPEG right here and then name it as you want uh, and then that's your that's your posting for the discussion area okay so i hope this helps and please take advantage of the lessons that i post from digital tutor or pluto site in the classroom uh, which are a little bit more uh, extensive and you can do at your own pace and uh, they're very useful for learning more techniques and uh, and tools for for your assignment okay so have fun and i look forward to seeing your blockings